It is good to be back in the house tonight. Thank God for the blessings and the mercies. He's provided. He's taking care of us, watching over us. Ever need supply. Thankful for the way my God has took care of us. I appreciate you being here tonight. We thank thank God to give us this time, and I hope tonight you're glad to be here. I hope you, you've asked God to bless and asked God to touch. Open your Bibles, if you will, Numbers chapter 35. Numbers chapter 35. My knowledge, I've never tried to preach from this passage of Scripture before. I got to read it yesterday. The Lord just wouldn't let me get away from it. And all I could think of was, well, they're going to think I tried to put all this together with what I said Sunday, but I had no idea Sunday that this is where I was going. So. If you're able tonight to stand in respect to the Word of God, Numbers chapter 35, I'm going to start reading in verse number 30, there at the end of the chapter. The Bible says, Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses. But one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Moreover, you shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death, but he shall surely be put to death. And you shall take no satisfaction for him that is fled to the city of his refuge, that he shall come again to dwell in the land until the death of the high priest, or until the death of the priest. So you shall not pollute the land wherein you are for blood, it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell, for I the Lord dwell among the children of Israel. Thank you. You can be seated. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we come to you again, we do thank you for the day that you give us and for the blessings and mercies you supplied. We thank you, Lord, for the way that you watched over us, took care of us. Lord, you give us health and strength to be able to get up and go. You've kept us safe from harm and danger, both seen and unseen. Lord, you've been better to me than I deserve. Now it's the close of the day. You've allowed us to come and meet here at your house. And God, I want to thank you for each one of these that's come out. Thankful, God, that you've provided us a place that we can come and we can gather together and worship together in spirit and truth. I thank you, Father, most of all for salvation. I thank you for the blood that Jesus shed at Calvary. I'm thankful tonight that He did it all. There was enough blood shed to take care of every sin ever committed. Father, I'm thankful tonight it never has to be done again. That Lamb of God died one time, and that one time was all that was necessary. And Father, I beg you tonight, forgive me why I failed you. Forgive me why I've come short. For the things I've said, done, thought that was displeasing, God, I pray that you take away you remove them. Put them under the blood. Thank you for the service already, the song that was sung, the testimony spoken. But God, I beg you now for the next few minutes, help me as I try to preach. Father, tonight I need your touch. I need that fresh anointing from on high. God, I need you to give me the words to say, show me what you'd have me to do. God, I'm not here tonight to waste people's time. I'm not here tonight to try to impress. I'm not here tonight to try to put on a show. I'm just here tonight to try to say what you'd have me to say. I beg you tonight, Father. Help me to do your will tonight. I pray that you'll watch my mouth. Don't let me say it wrong. Don't let me lead anybody astray. Father, I pray tonight that you continue to bless this place, that you build a hedge around it that the devil can't get through. I pray tonight and take away anything that might hinder the service. Go with us now through the remainder of this service. Have your way more than anything. Father, if there's anybody under the sound of my voice, 
that does not know Jesus Christ as Savior, I pray tonight, God, that you'll touch, convict their heart, and they'll see that need before it's too late. Have your way. But we ask you in Jesus' name, Amen. And I'm going to be honest with you. This is probably one of them messages that you might expect on a Sunday morning. And I don't know why God's leading to do it on a Wednesday night. But none of us ever knows who might be watching live, yeah. who might watch later, or who might be listening this evening and calling in on the telephone. Chapter 35 deals mainly with the cities of refuge, and I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail about that tonight. I, I know we've done that before, and maybe one of these days God will let me do it again. But the Bible tells us that God commanded Moses to put three cities on each side of Jordan as cities of refuge, that if someone killed somebody or took a life by accident, that if they could get to the city of refuge before the slayer got to them, they could live. Mm -hmm. And he's not talking about somebody that killed someone intentionally. He's not talking about murder. He's not talking about premeditation. But if just something happened that was an accident and they didn't realize what was going on, God provided a way of escape. They would go to the city of refuge but they had to, to remain there until the death of the priest. Once the priest died, they could go back home. For someone that was guilty of premeditated murder, there was no appeal, there was no hope, there was no refuge. God commanded, bloods be shed. He said, innocent blood pollutes the land, and I know I covered that Sunday, and I'm not... Don't want to go back and do it. But, and he said the only way to remedy that is the blood of the slayer is to be shed. Yeah. That set some people afire if you started talking about doctors and Planned Parenthood tonight, wouldn't it? Amen. So you shall not pollute the land wherein you are, for blood it defileth the land. The land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell, for I the Lord dwell among the children of Israel. God says, I'm not here among you. I don't want the land defiled. I don't want the land cursed. I don't want innocent blood to be shed. And I don't want to take this out of context tonight. But he tells us back in verse number 30, Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses, but one witness shall not testify against the person who's causing to die. Moreover, you shall take no satisfaction. And I want to look tonight, verse 31 and verse 32. You shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer which is guilty of death, but he shall be surely put to death, and you shall take no satisfaction for him that has fled to the city of his refuge, that he should come again to dwell in the land until the death of the priest. I want to think about that word satisfaction for a minute. You shall not take no satisfaction for the life of the murderer. You shall take no satisfaction for the life of him that has fled to the city of refuge. Now I know what I've said a minute ago. If the man who kills someone unintentionally goes to the city of refuge, he cannot leave until the death of the high priest. He is never free. If he sets foot outside that city of refuge, the slayer can take his life with no penalty whatsoever. But as long as he's inside the walls of that city of refuge, he is protected. Now I want you to think about something tonight. You and I tonight, we were born sinners. Now, as a child or as a baby in its mother's womb, none of us chose at that point to be a sinner. We were born sinners. Now, it's our fault 
if God convicts us of our sin and deals with us and we remain a sinner, but it's not our fault we were born sinners. You say, the preacher, I'm, I'm, I'm under, I can get to that city and wreck not well. Here's the thing. <laughs> Thank God they have a one high priest tonight. Yeah. He ain't going to die. Yeah. So you're never going to be free. Right. Mm-hmm. Which means that the slayer is under a penalty of death for the rest of his life. Every one of us tonight faces the penalty of death. Every one of us. And he said, you take no satisfaction. And that word satisfaction does not mean pleasure. It does not mean enjoyment. That word satisfaction literally has a couple of different meanings. That when you look at it, it ends up meaning the same thing. It means literally to cover or to pay off. To cover, in those days they had a substance called, and I may not be pronouncing it right, but had a substance called bitumen. That they could paint over, and it would cover everything. You want to you wanna make a comparison to what we have today, you go to Lowe's Hardware and buy you a can of kills. It'll cover anything. By the same token, there is no payoff. The one that kills intentionally, there is no amount of money that can redeem his life. The one that kills accidentally, there's no amount of money that can redeem his life. When it comes to you and I being under a death sentence tonight, there is no way we can paint over our sin. There's no way we can buy out our sins. You can't pay it off you can't paint it over. We've got them. We're under a penalty of death. It is that simple. And folks, tonight, without the good grace of God and the blood of Jesus Christ, we're doomed to a devil's hell. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, for all the sin comes short of the glory of God. Yeah. It tells us in Romans chapter 5 that sin and death is passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. He tells us in Romans chapter 6, for the wages of sin is death. Every one of us tonight are under a sentence of death. Mm-hmm. Not just physically, but we're under a sentence of death spiritually. Every one of us tonight, if we leave this world without Jesus Christ, we're going to die physically, but then we are going to die that second death. We will enter into that lake of fire at the white throne judgment, and there will be no recourse. There will be no satisfaction. There will be no painting it over. There will be no paying it off. There is no remedy for that. It's done. Moses is telling the people here. He says, if somebody is under a sentence of death, there is nothing that can be done without blood being shed to cleanse the land. Now, we want to try to cover up sin. The majority of the people are not really sorry for what they do. They're sorry for what they got caught doing. You know, you can look, and I don't care who you are. Very few, very few children do something contrary to what mom and daddy told them and come back on their own and say, I'm sorry. Right. Most of the time, they don't say, I'm sorry, until mom and daddy's called them. Yeah. And mom and daddy's getting ready to rob back with a hand to switch your belt. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, you ain't sorry you did it, you saw you got caught. Yeah. And we want to do anything we can to try to cover it up, buy our way out, get out of it any way we can. I- I've wondered a whole lot of times, wonder what Cain, yeah, Cain, must have thought. Maybe if I'd have buried my brother deep enough, then his blood wouldn't have cried out to God. Cain, you couldn't have buried him deep enough for that. Achan, 
If I had buried that gold and that silver and that Babylonian garment, if I had dug just a little bit deeper, and if I had put a little more sand, or if I had put a thicker cover of the tent floor, or if I had put something up something like that, nobody would have seen it. I don't care how deep we try to dig it. I don't care how much we try to hide it. The eyes of God's going to find us out. It's that simple. Ananias and Sapphire, they wanted to buy their position in church. They wanted to do and be important. They wanted to be somebody. They wanted to be high and mighty, but there wasn't enough money to do that. They cheated God. They lied to the Holy Ghost. God said, you're going to die. Yeah. And I wonder how many times they thought, well, maybe if we'd have just covered that a little deeper, maybe our sin would have never come to light. Folks, I don't care who we are tonight. You can't cover it enough and you can't pay off enough. Because God's going to see what you and I have done. He knows what we've done. He knows who we are. The problem is, we don't want to admit who we are. Yeah. And believe it or not, I ain't far from being done. This is the simplest message you ever going to hear. He said, you take no satisfaction for somebody that's under a penalty of death. There is nothing you and I can do outside of Christ to take the penalty of death away from us. Nothing. It doesn't matter what we try to do, how we try to live, what, who we try to help, how much we try to give, how much we want to paint ourselves. And, and I made this statement before, and, and some of you thought I was really getting carnal. But y'all remember the movie Gone with the Wind? Yeah. Granny referred to Rhett and Scarlett, or Manny, excuse me, not Granny, sorry. Manny. <laughs> referred to Rhett and Scarlet as mules and horse harness. Mm -hmm. She said, y'all trying to be something you ain't. Yep. And that's what happens to a whole lot of people in this world tonight. They're trying to be something they ain't. Mm -hmm. They're trying to dress up. They're trying to put on airs. Yeah. They're trying to cover up what we really are. Mm -hmm. But the Bible still tells us, I think it's in chapter 32 of the book of Numbers, I may be wrong, it might be 33, but it says your sin will find you out. Mm -hmm. And I'm under a sentence of death tonight, and it doesn't matter what I look like, it don't matter what the suit looks like, it don't matter what might come out of my mouth. If my heart ain't right with God, Yep. It doesn't matter how I try to cover it up or how I try to pay it off, I'm still going to die and go to hell because I'm under a penalty of death. Yeah. There is no satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going to pay that debt but blood. Yeah. You can satisfy a mortgage with cash. You can satisfy a personal loan with cash. You can satisfy... A dirty wall with paint. But you can't satisfy a sinful heart with nothing but the blood. Yeah. Right. And he tells us here, and when people tell me you don't have grace in the Old Testament, they're, they, they're just ignorant don't know the Word of God. Right. Because, he, again, he tells us in verse number 33, so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed. I was born a sinner. And I'm glad tonight I've got a city of refuge I can run to. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad tonight that I can go to him, and I don't want to leave that city of refuge. Thank God, I want my high priest to live forever. But if I leave this world and I refuse to accept the refuge that only Christ offers, and I refuse to run to Him and I accept Him as Savior, and I confess that He's Lord, the Lord, and God the Father, then I have, I at that point, no longer 
become an accidental sinner. I'm a purposeful sinner. Mm -hmm. There's no hope for me outside of Him. None of us here tonight can cover up. How many times, listen to me, how many times have we heard out of Acts chapter 8, and I know I've said this a whole lot and made the statement that, that Simon Peter is telling Simon the magician that he's a sinner and he's going to hell because when he says he offers some money and Simon Peter says, I'm money, perish with thee. For thou hast no part, no lot in this matter. You know what? I'm just going to I'm going to step out on land, but I'm going to tell you, I don't, I think Simon already understood he wasn't saved. He already knew he didn't have what it took. And folks, tonight, if we'll be honest, you know tonight whether you got the goods or not. You know tonight whether you got it, what it takes. But he said, let me reach in my wallet and I'll buy what you've got. I'll buy it because that's what I need. No. Just like those five foolish virgins couldn't go back and buy that oil that needed to go in the lamps, he couldn't buy what he needed with the money that was in his wallet. He knew he was coming up short. He knew he didn't have what it took. He knew that he was a sinner, that there was no hope for him whatsoever. And death was the penalty that awaited him. Yeah. You and me tonight. <coughs> Jesus Christ has already gone to that cross. He's already given his life. He's already died in my place. He's died in your place. Why do we want to suffer that second death in that lake of fire? Yeah. That don't even make good sense. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left his crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. See, he didn't just paint over it. He didn't just cover it. He cleansed it. And there's a difference. There's a difference. Under the Levitical laws, if a house, and, and, and believe it or not, house, and, and it might be the same kind of stuff, you know, black mold in the house of key. But those houses could actually have leprosy growing in them. Clothes could have leprosy growing in them. And they didn't, if they found leprosy in that house, under the Levitical laws, and I can't remember what chapter it is, they couldn't go in and just plaster over it. They had to go in and they had to scrape the walls. They had to scrape every bit of it off. They had to gather the dust and take it outside the camp and put it in an unclean place. If it was in a particular rock that was in the wall, they had to take that rock out and go get rid of it and replace it. They couldn't just paint over it. They couldn't just plaster over it. See, sin cannot be hidden Sin has to be dealt with. Amen. Sin has to be removed. And the only way to remove my sin is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And they would take that house and if they, once they put that rock, that rock back in, they had cleaned the dust. They'd come back. They'd shut the house up and they'd come back in seven days. If it was still in that house, you know what they did then? The house was torn down. The house was destroyed. Mm -hmm. Folks, there's going to come a time in our life that if we continue in sin and we refuse to accept Christ, we're under that penalty of death and we will be taken out of here without any hope whatsoever. And yet, Simon says, I want what you've got because I've come up short. I don't have it. I need it. I can't make it without it. But I'm going to buy it 
And Simon Peter says, boy, you're going to hell and your money's going with you. Right. And we look around and we say, well, wait a minute. No. And Simon Peter clarified that in 1 Peter chapter 1. When he said, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold according to the vain conversation, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. We can't pay it over it and we can't pay our way out of it. Folks, it's going to have to be through the blood. Blood's got to be shed. The murderer had no... When you're under that penalty of death, the only remedy is blood. And I'm thankful tonight that Jesus Christ loved us enough. He went to that cross. He shed that blood. He died in my place. He died so that I wouldn't have to. Yeah, yeah. And this may not make a better sense to y'all. But I'm thankful tonight. Because I don't have enough sense to clean myself up. And I sure don't have enough money to pay for my sin. But I'm thankful tonight I don't have to. Because Jesus has already done it for me. He's already done it for me. So, he says there is no satisfaction. There is no taking care of sin other than the blood has to be shed. So tonight, and I'm done with this, in Romans chapter 10, Paul says that, he says, Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God is that all Israel should be saved. Mm -hmm. The greatest thing he wanted in his life was to see his brethren after the flesh saved. The thing he wanted was to see every Jew come to a saving knowledge of Christ. He said, but here's what they're doing. And it's just like you talking about churches today. He said, because they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and they're going about to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted themselves under the righteousness of God. He said, what are you, what are you saying, preacher? They're covering up. They're painting over. They're sweeping it under the carpet. They're trying to buy their way out. You know, I made the statement several times that money does not equal class. Right. Mm -mm. Money don't equal salvation either. Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be just as many bank presidents in hell as there is drug addicts. Right. Yep. There's going to be just as many country club members in hell as there's going to be drunks that die in the gutter. Mm -hmm. Do we understand that tonight? Money don't buy, you know, again, and, I, and let me just say this. I know that there's been some times, and, and I think, listen, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I think we come to the house of God, we ought to give God our best. Mm -hmm. We ought to give Him our undivided attention. Yep. We ought to give Him the first fruits of our labors. Mm -hmm. And we ought to come in looking our best. Right. Okay, not as many that time, but okay. Yeah. Now, I know that there are times that there have been people that's come in here and may not be dressed maybe like some of the rest of us have. You say, yeah, preacher, what have you said to them? I ain't said a word to them. Right. Uh -huh. I'm going to let God take care of that one. Because I've seen too many people in my life that you let, you let God alone and you let God work yeah. mm -hmm. and don't worry about cleaning fish before you catch it. Right. Because I'm going to tell you something. Ladies, you can walk in here in a thousand dollar dress or gentlemen can come in here in a five hundred or thousand dollar suit three hundred dollar pair of shoes and die and go straight to hell in them fancy clothes they're wearing. Because yeah. that ain't going to make them saved sitting on the front pew of the church. Yeah. Because what we're trying to do 
is establish our own righteousness because we're ignorant of God's righteousness and because we're ignorant of His righteousness. You said, what's, what's God's righteousness? Hey, I'm the only righteousness, the only way I'm ever going to be righteous is to be clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Right. Yeah. And God is, and, and, and when I'm clothed in the righteous Christ, God has not, listen to me, God has not just covered me up with that. Thank God, He has redone me. Remember what Jesus said? You don't put new patches on old garments. Because God ain't in the patchwork business. God ain't just going to nip and tuck and whatever. God's going to make us new into a new creature in Christ Jesus. But instead of submitting ourselves to His righteousness, we want to establish our own righteousness and say, we're good enough. And we want to say, preacher, I stopped drinking, so I'm going to hell. Or I'm going to heaven. I stopped lying, I'm going to heaven. I stopped cheating, I'm going to heaven. I don't steal anymore, I'm going to heaven. I ain't trying to be ugly. But you just like I am. When Isaiah chapter 64 says, For we are all as an unclean body. Mm -hmm. And all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Mm -hmm. You didn't understand that. I want you to go home and study out that, that verse just to, just to see what God's comparing us to. Mm -hmm. To see how nasty we are in His sight, in mm -hmm. our own righteousness. There is not a one of us in here tonight worthy of going to heaven. None of us in here tonight. And yet, instead of submitting to the righteousness of God and putting our faith in the bloodshed of Calvary, we want to paint ourselves up. We want to cover ourselves up. We want to pay our way out and think we can buy off God. That's not going to happen. We're all under sentence of death. And the only remedy for a death sentence is the blood. So tonight the Bible still says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart God's raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. He is your only hope tonight. Amen. For there is none other name given unto heaven among men whereby we must be saved. Right. Then it is that the name of Jesus every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that he's Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank God tonight the only remedy is shed blood. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth from all sin. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being here tonight. We thank for each one of these that's come out. We thank you, Lord, tonight that you've allowed us to meet together. And thank you for allowing us to look at a portion of your word. Father, I know the message was simple tonight. And I pray, God, I said what you'd have me to say. I pray I said it the right way. I'm thankful tonight, God, I don't have to clean myself up, but the blood takes care of that. I'm glad tonight, God, that I don't have to try to pay my way out that Jesus Christ took care of the dead. But Father, I'm praying tonight that if there's anybody under the sound of my voice, either tonight or later on down the road that does not know Jesus as Savior, God, I beg you tonight, help them to understand that they are under a sentence of death there is no satisfaction. There is no remedy. The only hope is the blood shed by Christ at Calvary. Mm -hmm. So Father, you take the message, you use it for your honor, for your glory. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.